Hi everybody, it is November 7, 2018. Oh, it is a sad, sad, sad day. Don't you feel it too? And I am not talking about the Dems, the Dems who now have the House. The Republicans that kept the Senate and they have three additional Republicans. Or did the Republicans even have the Senate? I don't know. Oh, that's right. I'm not paying much attention to the staged show put on for Americans, but it is scary to see the pass of the gavel to this nutcase once again. Oh my God. Don't you say, oh my God, a lot. Don't you say, wow, wow, okay, brain can't quite comprehend, you don't really know how to articulate this reality that has manifested, so you just say, wow, a lot. Um, <laughs> I, it's scary. Listen to this. Today is more than about Democrats and Republicans. It's about restoring the Constitution's checks and balances to the Trump administration. Really? Oh my God. And Americans don't know, those Democrats don't know that those checks and balances have been gone for a long time. Like during the eight years of Obama. And they listen to this and they go, yay! It was Trump who unraveled those checks and balances? Are you kidding me? Can Americans actually look at this woman and not feel disgusted, repulsed by her malignant narcissism? But can they actually listen to this and think what this woman is saying is the truth? Yeah. We've got an awful lot of people who will do just that. That's the scary part. The scary part is the Americans who listen to this and actually believe it. It's about stopping the GOP and Mitch McConnell's assaults on Medicare, Medicaid, the Affordable Care Act, and the health care of 130 million Americans living with pre-existing medical conditions. Let's hear it more for pre-existing medical condition. Are you kidding me? Let's hear it more for pre-existing conditions? Well, Americans, they are sick. And they've got an awful lot of pre-existing conditions. It's about ending wealthy special interest free reign over Washington. But more than anything, oh it's about what a new democratic majority will mean in the lives of hardworking Americans. Demo you are screwed. You are so screwed, Americans. And yeah. We have screwed ourselves, allowing nutcases who are all about themselves be our quote unquote leaders. Oh, we screwed ourselves. How? By voting for the lesser of two evil? Well, that's been going on my entire life. 60 years, nearly. Um, voting for the lesser of two evil. And we got evil. You manifest evil that way. We've manifested incredible evil. It's unleashing all over, taking people out. Democrat, Republican, does not matter. But this nutcase in particular, you know, what is really astounding is that, oh my God, um, every, everything that she is saying about the Republicans is exactly what the Democrats do. But we do have those Americans 
who just, they're not about truth. So they don't care about truth. And they can't, they can't hold on to what happened last year, the year before, the eight years of Obama, the, the eight years of this Bush-Cheney regime. They don't hold on to anything. They don't, they don't put in context anything. Context is gone. Critical thinking is gone. So, what happens is, it's like they hear this for the first time. Um, we are in big trouble. Big trouble. It did not matter who won. Though, I have to tell you, I did want the Republicans to win. I so wanted the Republicans to win, even though I understand that we don't have two parties. Why? Because I wanted an in-your-face failure for these Democrats. Because the Democrats really have, they are, it, it's the, it, the circus that they put on and the outrageous lies that come out of the Democrats and the calling for violence against Republicans and the they and maybe this is just part of the script they have been the party that has been the system failure party the party that has been so loud bringing down our system. Frankly, <laughs> that's a good thing because this system is going. It's it, and you know how it is just moving along incrementally. I wish that it would just collapse quickly. Done. But then what do we have? We've got that new world order. And it will be a boot stomping on your face every single day. Why do I think that? Because we do not have the ordinary people in a condition to fight for anything else. So maybe the incremental is better. Yeah, I go back and forth. When you live complete and utter insanity, and you can't, you can't inject health into it. There is, it's very hard to, to reason, to even address it. It's like a, a disease that has grown so malignant and it's spreading at a, 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 at a rate so fast There is, at this point, and I'm not a pessimist, I'm not an optimist, I'm a realist. Insanity is going to increase so greatly that I hope to God, and I know how hard it is to maintain one's sanity in the face of such uh, great insanity but it's not the kind of fun insanity I wish people would just go over the edge and just be la 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 dancing in the street having a fabulous time and believing that everything is just absolutely wonderful and loving everybody you know strangers just hugging one another that you know we we've considered to be insane no what we have is a violent insanity taking over and that's also the really scary part it's a violent insanity it's a hatred that has been unleashed and we are seeing it in ordinary people they just doing whatever the hell they want to do not caring about anything. 
we have unleashed here a, a disease. And in fact, um, let me read this article. Shining a light on the so sociopaths in politics. November 7. And do understand, even though the Democrats have really shown themselves to be, oh, um, mentally ill, severely mentally ill, their violence, their uh, just calling people names, they acting like children, not showing any behaviors that we used to see, even though it was insane, you know, decades ago, um, there was civility, there was um, people didn't go for the jugular because you were a Republican or Democrat or but it is the Democrats that are forcing themselves in a violent way against anybody that disagrees with them. This is not what we lived decades ago. And the Republicans certainly show um, far more maturity and restraint. Democrats have just unleashed themselves. Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi, all these people calling for, you know, a violence against uh, the right. Well, please understand, all of this is part of the program. It's the divide and conquer to, to get people to hate one another. And I can't stand how successfully um, how successful is their strategy. But if you think it's only the Democrats and can't see that all you have to do is look back at what the Republicans have done to this country, that we don't have one party People saying that fascism is coming, it's, it's been here, that this is, this is just part of the corporate takeover, that corporations, you know, checks and balances, give me a break, Nancy, please, checks and balances, are you kidding me? Those checks and balances were gone. I, it, it, 150 years ago, corporations rule, and Americans can't even see that. I had a conversation with a neighbor, I can't believe this, who, who is, oh, she loves Hillary Clinton. And I brought up, you know, um, she's a criminal and there there's evidence of her criminality she is a crazy narcissistic psychopath criminal and that woman said oh I know you know yeah but I love Hillary are you kidding me and as much as she understood that she was supporting criminals, she didn't think that that was wrong. This is the condition of the American people now. This woman is a complete and utter nut job. She is... A, Clearly, either she has had way too much, I don't know, psychiatric medication that has really crippled her brain, 
But when you listen to her speak, she has difficulty speaking. She sometimes sounds either drunk or overly medicated. And she is out of her friggin' mind. And this is the leader that a lot of Americans are now very happy to have back as the Speaker of the House. So, yeah, we have a major problem with Americans. And many Americans fall right into this category. Either pathological or they have the tendencies, the sociopath, psychopathic tendencies. And this is what has manifested in our great country. We're surrounded by sick people. Sociopaths completely lack a conscience or any capacity for real regret about hurting people I am surrounded by them. And clearly, based on your comments, many of you are surrounded by them. Ordinary Americans. Although they pretend the opposite. Oh, they pretend to care and they've got compassion. But all you have to do is look at how they live, what they do, and you will find out that they are lying, pretending we would not have so many people suffering if the majority of people had a conscience. Sociopaths put their own desires and wants on a totally different level from those of other people. Their wants are incommensurate, incommensurate, incom Wow. Um, you know what I mean. They truly believe their ends justify their means. So you have an awful lot of Americans who have goals. They have an agenda. So what do they do to achieve their goal? They lie. They manipulate. They gaslight. They do whatever it takes. And then they say that their lies, if confronted, were for the benefit of both of us. Or it, it was a good lie. It was something that I was trying to do for you. And you had to lie to achieve that. I've experienced that, and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that. It, it, the problems that we have, if we are not focused on ourselves, trying to become better human beings, strengthen our moral core, being aware of our behavior and our effect on others. That we do things that don't hurt other people. If we care, that's what we do. But if we don't care, we don't bother. You know, now is the time well, it's way late. But if you're not, if you are not focusing, focusing on your own behavior, how you operate in the world, um, you are working to establish trust, to maintain trust in your relationships. If you are not taking responsibility for what you have done to others, trying to repair relationships, doing all of that work, 
You are absolutely 100% part of the problem. Because these sociopathic leaders, quote unquote, of ours, are not going to stop. And if we don't have strong relationships, trusting relationships, that we can then um, kind of filter out into the larger community, we're done. We're done. And that is the only possible way to survive all of what has been happening and what will continue to happen. It is the only way to survive. If you do not have trusting people in your life, you're alone. So you can, you can think that I'm wrong and I'm focusing on all of the bad things people do and I'm critical and I'm this and I'm that. No, what I really do believe is if you just allow these behaviors to continue in your relationships, you are absolutely 100% part of creating this this psychopathic nightmare and you are absolutely supporting those who behave in ways that you know is wrong and hurt other people. You support it. You give your consent. Go for it. And when you don't call anybody out, it, it just allow, it paves the way for them to continue on with those behaviors. So many people have left comments. I don't rely on anybody anymore. I just turn to Christ and that's it. Um, how sad is that? And so many people who just believe, well, human sin and um, this is just, you know, how it is. Um, I, no. This is a result of a whole people too frightened to confront people to hold them accountable. So we have unleashed evil. We've helped pave the way for it ourselves. You know, sociopaths never accept the slightest responsibility for anything that goes wrong. How many people, how many friends have I had in my life cannot even accept responsibility for the stupid little things, for the stupid little lies that they tell? But when they do that, they're telling you, huh, yeah, you can guarantee that if I can lie about these stupid little things that, that are really just meaningless, I can lie about the big things. People let us know who they are all the time if we pay attention to all of the signals. You will never hear a sincere apology from them. No, because they lack a conscience. They don't have the capacity for real regret. You know, when you get into an argument or you have a falling out with somebody and they are someone that is close, it's a, it's a friendship, it's, um, you care about them, regardless of who is right or wrong in that, you care how they might be feeling from that argument. It's the person who genuinely cares, who reaches out and will communicate, look, it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. I'm, I just, I'm sorry for the circumstance and I don't want you to be feeling bad. It's the person who can't do that, won't do that. That is where the problem is. Oh, they claim they care so much about you. But if they can't care how you're feeling 
after an argument, regardless of who is right or wrong. It's an indication that they have no conscience, they have no regret, and they can do things to you that can really hurt. And then they don't care. Then you have a sociopath or a psychopath or or somebody who may not be pathological, but their tendencies are so strong right out there. And those are the people that unfortunately, if they show you this kind of behavior over and over and over again, you try to, uh, you know, bring awareness to this, whatever, and they won't go there. Those are the people who are dangerous and you need to stay away from them. Those are the people that you can't get through to if you've tried over and over again. How many people are like just that? Sociopaths have a lopsided notion of property rights. What's theirs is theirs and what's yours is theirs too. They therefore defend currency inflation and taxation as good things. Uh, they can't get that taxation is stealing. It's a simple concept. But we have so many statists who are, yay, yay, government, yay, yay, Democrats, yay, yay, Nancy Pelosi is the speaker again. Yay, yay. I'm going to get destroyed more. Oh, can't put that into my brain. Delete it. Just believe everything is wonderful. When everything is crumbling and collapsing right around you. Oh, I'll ignore it. I'll ignore it. I'll ignore it. Can't see that. Why? Oh, because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Oh, so everything's about you. Sociopaths usually pick the wrong target to attack. If they lose their wallet, they kick the dog. Yeah, I've seen that. If 16 Saudis fly planes into buildings, they attack Afghanistan. Um, well, there are a lot of people who get some things and don't get other things. So don't leave comments about the 16 Saudis and, you know, look. It's very hard for me to get how people can see some agendas and not others. Because it's been a rather rapid progression for me to understand, okay, our government was involved in 9-11. Um, then when, when I became aware of the chemtrails, the geoengineering, it was boom, 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 boom. Which is a little overwhelming, but how you can see some conspiracies and then deny other conspiracies. It, it's that that's the kind of brain that maybe needs um, an awful lot more time to adjust to how sick our world is. And sociopaths traffic in disturbing news. They love to pass on destructive rumors and they'll falsify information to damage others. Those are the the uh, social engineers, you know, putting out the propaganda of mainstream uh, through mainstream media. They're chronic, extremely convincing, and even enthusiastic liars who often believe their own lies. That means they aren't easy to spot because normal people naturally assume another person is telling the truth. Our naivete and our wanting to believe that are, so many people are good has also contributed to this nightmare. It's not about believing that the majority are bad. It's about taking 
taking everybody on an individual basis and being very cautious today. But there are flags that people put up. And look, <laughs> I've denied them. I, I, I've, and some, when, if I talked about them, you would go, how could you deny that? How could you deny that? We deny these things because we are, because seeing them and calling them for what they are, these behaviors, means you need to move away. And you don't want to when you care about people. And you want to believe that they'll get right, you know, they'll, they'll stop doing what they do. And they don't. Over and over again. They don't. So they cause a lot of damage. Yeah, I have been saying an awful lot of the same things throughout six years. Because this is the root cause of an awful lot of our problems. And I knew several years into my posting on YouTube that there was no way that we were ever going to get this country back. No way. If these agendas continue, people will fall sick. More and more will go over the edge. We'll be losing people. People will be weakened. People will be so affected by the microwaves, by the aerosol spraying, that they won't even be able to get off their couch. And do you know how many people are just like that now? And then I just moved to the importance of making your relationship strong based on trust, which means that we all have to look at our own behavior and how we are treating one another. Because when the shit hits the fan for you and the shit has been hitting the fan over and over again for millions and millions and millions of Americans who found themselves living a life that they never thought that they would, they're the ones who understand the importance of trust. It's the comfortable ones who haven't really faced the consequences yet, who have no idea. They take for granted what they have in their life now and when it's gone that's when they will know who their real friends are who their real family is and many people have already experienced they're not there they abandon you they don't help you and they turn their backs when you lose the material things you're no longer worth anything because we have allowed money to be our value nothing else so anyway yeah we're in for it, guys. We're still in for it. The agendas will continue. Uh, the insanity is going to continue. We are going to be seeing a collapse, system failure, just going on all over the place. Prepare. Prepare for uh, these weather events that will continue. Prepare for the uh, economy collapsing. Prepare for pandemics, flus, and uh, which will be unleashed. Prepare for your own health 
to decline. This is no joke what we are playing and you can deny it all you want. And you can deny how bad it is or you can, you know, criticize me and call me names and I'm a I'm a real pessimist and oh my god, all you do is uh, talk about the problems and all that. Look, I don't care anymore. You can judge me all you want. But what I am saying to you is this is not going to stop. This We are headed for, you know, it, it's like the, the train with no brakes. And we're on it. We're all on it. My God. Look, for those of you who don't know, I was a Democrat all my life. Stopped voting in 2012, got thrown out of the matrix completely, seeing it for what it is. But these people, if Americans can't see through these crazy nut jobs, these, you know, Republicans, it's a little bit harder because they do, well, they do have. Uh, they display more maturity and um, they, they just are not, it, it's like you don't see them as somebody who's put on a fancy dress and been let out of a psychiatric institution to give a speech. Yay, yay. Yay, pre-existing conditions. Oh my God. Republicans don't really act like that, but it doesn't matter. They're setting you up. It's the divide and conquer. Okay, Republicans, uh, you don't go over board. You continue to, you know, behave as if you're the mature seventh graders. We'll let the Democrats unleash behaviors that Americans should really be very frightened of and want to get rid of these crazy people. But let's just watch their response and see if they can get rid of them. Uh-uh. No. No. Because Americans are also crazy people. All right, guys. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all feeling okay. Crazy time we're living. Ciao.